What's up everyone, it's your boy Nick and I hope you're having a rad day. So today we're going to be talking about the three or four different ways to attach baseboard to your walls for beginners. We're going to talk about the industry standard all the way through to attaching baseboard to your walls for people who don't have too many tools to hand. There's a few different ways, a few different techniques to do it, so we're going to cover all bases. So uh, let's get to it. Yeah. For those of you who've been following our recent videos know that we are currently updating our bedrooms and we just finished renovating Wolf's bedroom and the office room and now we're currently working on a master bedroom. So this room is a pretty big project in itself because not only is it the biggest bedroom in the house but it also consists of a master ensuite, a walk-in closet and we're going to do a pretty cool feature wall back here. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. So we have already done some work in this room which consists of ripping out the old baseboard, ripping out the old carpet and replacing that carpet with this maple hardwood flooring to match the rest of the house. hundred and forty two and a half. Don't forget that. But before we get into that, there's a couple of things I just want to go over real quick. I got merch now. So some of you have been asking for a while now, so I delivered. And I got a couple of different styles for you to check out. Oh my goodness. Don't use your saw in the rain. It doesn't like it. And there's a few different ways for you to get a t-shirt if you want one. So one way is to simply click down below or go check out my Teespring store or you can simply just win one, which is always fun. So if you head on over to raddadbuilds.com and sign up to my mailing list, which is completely free, you can be in the chance of winning one of these t-shirts or one of my new designs when they get released. You also get to watch my videos come out 24 hours before the rest of the public get to see it, which is kind of cool. And now that I've said it, it's actually something that I gotta do now. So yeah, it's, there's a bunch of cool stuff. It's like you can get free, win some stickers and just kind of get a heads up on what's going on and some backstage pass. It's like, a, it's kind of like a Patreon, but I'm not asking for money. So one more last thing I wanna mention is that on my last, one of my last videos, I did the hardwood floor insulation video. And at the end of that, someone reached out and suggested a way of doing something which would have made my job so much easier and it really got me thinking that like a bunch of people ask me questions all the time and I can't always get to them super quick and I myself ask people on YouTube questions all the time and I can't I don't always get a reply so what the guy actually what the guy actually suggested to me was when I was laying the floor in when I come to the closet I was laying the floor in, I was installing the floor in backwards so I, I had to ditch the actual floor nail and started using my brad nail but what he told me was I should use a spline so that way I can reverse the flow of the flooring and then install it the correct way going into the closet. Which is such a good idea, I wish I like kind of thought of that when I, when I came to that. So it got me thinking, I really want to create like a community where people can ask questions and get answers, like the appropriate answers right away from other professionals. So what I've done is I've created a Facebook group and it's called Rat Dad Builds Community Hangout. Whether you're like advanced, professional, or you're just beginning or whatever, like whatever the situation is. If you've got an interest in like woodwork, DIY home improvement, like making in general, it's a group for everyone to come in and either share knowledge that they have or ask questions on a certain project they're working on and to kind of show off projects that you've done. It's on Facebook and it's the Red Dead Builds Community Hangout. There's not many people there right now, but I feel like I'll keep on mentioning it and hopefully create some kind of community. And um, I'll be in there and be chatting away and uh, yeah, I think it'll be kind of cool. You remember that measurement? I got it. Okay, so that's enough chit chat. Let's get into today's video. So we've got three different walls to which they have their own challenges. So we've got this long back wall which is nice and flat and the floor is nice and flat too. We have another long wall but this one has a bit of a kink in it and a bit of a dip in the flooring. And then this wall which is nice and flat and has a couple of short pieces as well as some trim. So each wall we're going to attach the baseboard in its own different way. 
Okay, so this backhoe, we're gonna attach it two ways. The first half is gonna be with the brad nailer, which is the industry standard. And then the second half is gonna be the more traditional route with the hammer and the finishing nails. So there's many reasons why this is the industry standard and the main reasons are because it, one, it's really easy, quick and simple to use. Once you find where your stud is, you just simply push it in, pull the trigger and it's done. And if the settings are correct on the nail gun, you will sink the nail 99% of the time. So you don't have to go around and hit all the nail heads in after the fact. You just gotta fill it, sand it, paint it, move on super quick. And it's also worked really great for trim. The only downfall is these are expensive. Depending on the brand that you like to buy, they can vary from 200 to 400 bucks, which is pretty expensive for a tool that you're not gonna use that often. That said, if you've got a lot of baseball to do, I would recommend trying to rent one of these because you can rent them for about 20 to 25 bucks a day from your local Home Depot and probably cheaper from a private tool rental place. And it's a lot cleaner, a lot quicker, and there's a reason why it is the industry standard. But if this isn't an option for you, that's okay. We have a few different choices to pick from. You can always try the old traditional route and that's with the smooth finishing nails and banging them in by hand. And the pro to that is that they're super cheap. Like this box cost me like two bucks. There's like, there's 80 nails in there, so they will get you pretty far. These, like the brad nailer, also work really well for trim as well. A few of the downfalls of doing it this way is one, that it takes a long time. Not only have you got to bang each nail in, you also have to go around and sink each nail in too. So you kind of got to do the process twice and you risk smashing your fingers and smashing the baseboard or whatever you're nailing. So if you didn't want to nail the boards, you could always just screw them in. And these work particularly well when you've got a curved wall, a wavy wall or a big dip in the floor where you want to manipulate the baseboard to follow those curves. That said, you do need access to at least a drill with a countersink and in my case, an impact driver. Also, I feel like the screws would probably cost a lot more than the nails. I can't remember how much these cost, but I know for a fact they're more expensive than nails. And it's pretty simple to attach a baseboard with screws. You simply find where the location of the stud is, countersink your first hole, so that way the screw gets sunken into the baseboard. Like so. Once your screw's in, you want to fill it, but the only downfall is having a screw is that the hole is much bigger. So the filler will take a little bit longer to dry if you're in a bit of a rush. Also, I want to add, I don't think screws are a great option for trim around doors and windows. You can get screws with smaller heads, which might work better. But I think if it was down to me and I had the option of screws or nails, I would always nail it. And lastly, probably the easiest way to attach baseboard to your wall is to use some kind of sealant or adhesive. I'm, using, I'm gonna be using uh, No More Nails, which is a construction adhesive. You can also use caulk. I would recommend a construction adhesive over caulk because there's more grab power on these, though these are a lot more expensive. Though these are really good options, they do come with the limitations. And that's, you can't really stick the baseboard to uh, like a really curved wall or like a round, rounded wall and like really hard to attach like a really long piece of baseboard because it kind of wants to peel off as you're doing it. And yes, you can clamp it down and weigh it down and that's fine on like smaller lengths or just one length. But if you're doing a whole room or like a whole house, it's really hard to like put stuff against your baseboard all the way around. You're gonna be waiting. It's gonna take so much longer. You might as well just get a few nails and tack them in here and there. So you just simply just apply like a sparing amount to the back of the baseboard. Kind of like push it in. It helps to kind of peel it back a little bit and then kind of re push it back in. It really grabs just as well. But you can see here, like this wall is a little bit wavy, which is this is fine because I can hide that with caulk when I come to paint it. But like it's if I could nail it, if I was gonna nail it, it would really pull it in. It's really hard to get that last little grab with that, but it's okay. This, these are only small gaps. I can cog that, no problem. These are also not a great option for trim around windows and doors because 
uh, gravity and it's just gonna get so messy. So I just, I wouldn't recommend it for trim. That's one of the downfalls. Okay, so that's four very good options to attach baseball to your walls for beginners, dependent on your situation or the tools that you have to hand. If you think of any more ways to attach baseball to your walls, let me know in the comments down below. I wanna hear them. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know in the comments down below. Also, go like, share, subscribe, and all that kind of jazz. Go check out some of my merch if that interests you. Go check out the Facebook page if that interests you too. I gotta get filling these holes and painting the baseboard so I can get the feature wall going tomorrow which is the next video, so you're gonna to wanna to stick around and subscribe to check that one out. And um, I think that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.